What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is the King and I Life podcast, hosted by myself, Soul Touch of the Poet, and my brother, Son Soul X, in his joint. Check it out. Hit us up www.kingandilife.com for all our podcast info. Subscribe to whatever podcast platform that you choose. Also, hit us up k i n g a n d e y e three six nine at gmail.com. Email us your suggestions, your feedback, and all that good stuff. Tune in to us live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And make sure you like, subscribe, and share because we are all over all those social media platforms. Stay tuned for the good stuff. Yeah, we are. I get it. But at the end of the day, you know, some people just don't research what they buy. Like, you know, whether it's V6, V8, or whatever the case may be, it also factors in if you have to pay for premium gas or not. And, you know, I've heard people who have some of these cars that got premium gas. Oh, my gas is $5. This, 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 this. And I'm saying, well, you the jackass that bought the car to need premium gas. Well, I didn't take that into consideration. And I'm sitting there like, what the f- what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, what do you mean you didn't take that into consideration? Like, I've never, ever, ever, ever wanted a car that take premium gas. And I made it a point not to get one. Although there are some that I goddamn want so goddamn bad. I'd have always had the mindset, that's expensive gas. And I always have to put that in my car unless I was smart enough, smart enough to go buy regular gas and get Octane Booster and put it in my car. Some people don't think about all that shit, but hey. True that, true that. And again, I'm, believe me, I'm not bashing people who prefer sports cars or V8s because I'm totally one of those guys. I love, love, love V8s. Mm. But um, right now, it's just not a a need right now in my life. And eventually, I will get there. I, I plan on getting another sports car here where I was going to do it this summer. But I'm probably going to push that back now. <laughs> but it's, it's not something, you know, that hell, I, I barely have enough time to drive the damn car I got now. So... Mm. It's just not something that's on my my immediate radar. But if I did have time like that, oh, yeah, hell yeah. I'll probably go ahead and get me another one. Um, I'll say this. The thing about the global economy is that everything is so intertwined that you can't blame it on just one thing. So what I see by that is everybody is trading with everybody. So whatever goes on here affects um, whatever goes on somewhere else. And whatever goes on somewhere else affects stuff here. Then you have um, these companies and corporations moving their factories and stuff to other countries, which also is a factor. So let's look at it like this. You have Harley Davidson who moved their company from the United States overseas. Now they build the motorcycles overseas and have to ship them back here. Then you have... Uh, companies like General Motors, who we all know has Chevy, GMC, and all of them. They have plants in other countries. So they build the cars in other countries and they have to ship them here. You have, uh, you got Toyota, Volkswagen, Hyundai, uh, and, and all those, Nissan and all of them. They have companies over here. And then sometimes they have to ship cars over there. 
So you have stuff moving around so much and the global market is global economy is so interlocked. It's like, you know, when people start complaining about stuff, it's like, well, you just really have to look at what's going on in the world. Just like, you know, we can have our own oil here, but we buy oil from a whole bunch of different countries. And that affects what goes on here. Other countries buy oil from here. And it's like, yeah, it, it's just so interlocked. Yeah, and that's the thing that confuses me. Because how did that make sense? That we have the resources here within this this country to fuel all of our you know our needs or fulfill all our needs how you want to put it but yeah still we still get fuel from different countries and it's kind of like we get a lot of our resources that we can get right here from the inside of our own borders but we import it from different countries and I get that trying to save money because as Americans, we kind of require larger wages mm-hmm. because our cost of living over this mother yeah. is kind of high, especially when you live in places like California. I mean, from what I heard, it's, it's outrageous out there right now. But again, when it comes down to the global economy, I get that commerce has to take place. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's how everybody stays afloat. <clears throat> but some things just do not have to be imported or exported. It's more beneficial to make it right here, produce it right here, and sell it right here. You don't always have to, again, import, export. It's commerce. I get it. But common sense just isn't common in some of these situations. You're saying that you're saving money, but in all actuality, you're really not. The price of shipping things nowadays have gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. And you got all these uh, shipping containers and uh, these shipping um, boats with the containers on the boats just sitting in the ocean right now because they, I don't even know if they still got that debacle straight now. It's not. So again, there you go. You want to rely on a different country for some of your goods because you say it's cheaper, but in all actuality, it's not cheaper because by the time you pay for shipping, handling, labor, all that, You only saved a few dollars because you don't want to produce it here. Like the whole thing with Harley Davidson. From looking at it, the president of that company was talking about he wanted to bring uh, manufacturing back to the U.S. because it's it's getting so expensive to import them now. I don't know if he ever moved on that or not, but that's the last thing I heard. And when did you hear that? That was a couple of years ago, actually. Because I know they um, just moved the, the, the company a couple of years ago. It was back when Trump was in office. And, you know, it was a big thing about trying to get American companies to come back uh, and start manufacturing here in the U.S. And I think it was, it was a couple of years ago around about bike fest or something like that or Daytona Beach bike fest but anyway I I never did stay on top of it so I don't know what was the heads and tails of it Mm -hmm. um yeah like you were saying um it, it it's it's interesting that we can do everything here but they 
these companies ship manufacturing to other countries to cut costs, this, that, and the other. And for me, my understanding is that <clears throat> it's cheaper to build in other countries on so many levels. It's cheaper as, as far as wages that they have to pay employees and all that type of stuff. Um, it's cheaper as far as regulations in America and all this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, we also have to take into consideration when they abandon their factories and stuff here to move overseas, they're doing a disservice to this country and the, and the people that had those jobs. Cause now those people lost jobs and all this, that, and the other, and that, that um causes other kind of issues, especially with inflation and the cost of goods and stuff like that. Everything is getting more expensive, no jobs here, this, that, and the other. And like you're talking about the ships who are stuck at ports and, or, you know, whatever. And it's like, right. when you factor that in, it's like, okay, so how much money are y'all actually saving now? Because you have stuff sitting there at ports or in the water waiting to get to the docks. Um, some of this stuff is food. Some of this stuff, you know, goes bad. Uh, um, stuff is being pushed back as far as manufacturing because they need these types of supplies that come from overseas, this, that, and the other. Again, this, this global economy is so interlaced that it's it, it just crazy. Um, these, these chips that are needed for cars and all this other stuff, a lot of them are built overseas and they're shipped here. Uh, then the jokers who are now building plants here to manufacture those chips, um, the resources it takes <coughs> to build these plants is a lot of money, a lot of resources. It raises inflation and all. It's just so, so, so crazy how how all that works and, and how all that has come to be. But I think that, um, again, with my limited knowledge on, on how the entire process works, I could just look at it as if if we went back to depending on what we have here and working on our economy here and stop relying on other stuff, especially when we should not be in a position now to allow what happens elsewhere to affect stuff like our gas prices. Because to me, that's just crazy. Right. I think one of the major things that we've forgotten in this country is we know how to build shit. Yeah. Like there's a time when we really, as Americans took pride in the products that we produce. Mm -hmm. Like at one time, Detroit was a, a freaking Mecca, son. Like, yeah, they produce some of the best freaking cars. People would say, don't buy your car on a Monday or a Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because on Monday, they're trying to get over the, the uh, hangover they had from the weekend. And on Fridays, they're so, so excited that they might forget to put something on your shit. Yeah. But seriously, um, the cars that we produced back in the <clears throat> 60s and the 70s and part of the 80s were great cars. Right. It's only after those companies decided, hey, we can make more money by having shit break. That's when they start screwing everything up. But as far as um, when our nation was one of the leading nations of manufacturers, we were doing great. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, we as citizens or people who produce things, we took pride in our work. We took, you know, pride in knowing that we produce something that's going to be shipped out to a different country that, you know, you can say, I put my stamp on that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I put hard work into that to make sure that that customer received a, a top product. And not only that, I mean, the money that 
our citizens was making from these manufacturing jobs also went into our own economy. Mm -hmm. So that was another thing that kept our economy, you know, at a great uh, space. But once we started getting to a, a place where we let the politicians talk us into uh, shutting our businesses down and you can do it cheaper overseas, that's where I think things start going left for our nation. And not pointing a finger at anyone in particular, because there's a lot of freaking companies that did that. But I'm simply saying that was the, the, the turning point where look and see where we are now. It, it definitely, you know, has played its role on our economy that we don't produce nowhere near as much as we used to. You know, the, the one thing I will throw in that though, um, as far as uh, companies shipping manufacturing to overseas, um, the one thing that is cheaper for them is the the markets that they sell their cars to in those other countries for like instance like you know all these car companies that sell cars in those other countries that i can understand because you know they're building teslas in china they're building chevys in china they're building chevys in mexico just then the other in a you know Sometimes they have models that they don't sell here or rebranded models right. over there, this, that, and other. So I get it. My problem is when you build these cars, American cars overseas, and then ship them back here. That's the problem that I have. I don't have a problem with you building manufacturing plants that specifically sell those vehicles in those countries. But when you're building them over there and then shipping them back here, it's kind of like, again, help me understand where you're saving money overall because you're building the cars over there and you're shipping them back here to be sold here. Whereas, okay, well, why don't you just build them here and ship whatever you need to ship overseas to sell overseas? It's like you somebody needs to help me understand that part of the equation because it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but then again, I get it. It costs money to ship a car, <laughs> no matter which way it's going. But why build them overseas to ship them here? But then, hey, you know, the greed or whatever the case may be, and, and the cost goes down to the consumer and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, if you're not in, 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 in bed with the right politician, you don't get the 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 breaks and in, in the tax breaks and, and all that other, I get all of that. So that also plays into the global economy, but um, it's just crazy to me. And the other thing that, that is crazy to me is how a lot of these companies that we have over here, for instance, like, what is it like? Uh, let's just throw a couple of them in there. Taco Bell, Burger King, uh, Wendy's, uh, Friday's, Applebee's, all of these restaurants that are here. The right. one thing that I've found weird to me is uh, this dude with these sound bites. My bad. I'm sorry. Sorry. I was um, trying to get mute. I'm sorry. The one thing I find weird is that they're owned by financial groups. So, for instance, like I have an account with Stash where you use the debit card and you automatically get stock in whatever these companies are. Um, so I use my debit card, I think, at um, Taco Bell, I want to say, a while ago. And the stock didn't come up Taco Bell. It came up Dine Brands. And when I look up Dine Brands, I'm looking at all of the restaurants that they own and i'm like ain't this some shit like somebody's people like all of these these companies that we have here have sold to a a, a financial group to make their money and it's like now it's owned with this group of restaurants that we all know and love and it's like 
the prices at these restaurants are all over the place. And it's like, okay, so help me understand why this is this and this is that. And, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah, it is. When you have so many, you know, like you're saying, restaurants, again, all those supplies have to come from somewhere. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, everything that they need can be found in the same town or the next town over. Again, I just believe that our country is great at producing things. We, we never was horrible at it. You know, we, we came to a time where we just stopped um, putting products on the market that actually lasted because, again, these companies figured out, if I build something that lasts, then you're going to stop buying it. Mm. So they got to a point where they deliberately start building things that would break or need some type of maintenance, which is, again, is a horrible thing, but business, what can you say, right? But again, there are just so many things that are so unnecessary as far as like importing. Again, it, it makes no sense when you have everything you need right here with on the, the inside of our nation to produce these products, but you would rather let someone else build it, send it over here. Forget the fact that you got everything you need right here. It makes no sense to me. So, um, <clears throat> moving on, um, these next two topics, uh, are kind of one in the same and we kind of talked on, touched on them. What are your thoughts on gas prices and, and inflation overall? Um, I get that when things happen, inflation goes up, meaning the gas prices. But the cost of everything goes up when gas price goes up because it costs more to deliver uh, products. Everything that's in my room right now got here because of a truck. Mm -hmm. Everything had to be loaded on a truck, unloaded, transported. I mean, however you want to look at it, it had to come on a truck. So again, everything's going to go up because it has to be moved. You right. have to have fuel to put in these trucks. But I just, I strongly disagree with the people who are taking advantage of the situation, meaning price gouging like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You're making money. We know that, you know, the best way to get through these situations is, unfortunately, is you have to mark up your products because you can't afford to pay for the fuel. So you have to mark it up in order to offset that cost of fuel. We get that. But if you only need to mark up your product by three or four dollars and you marking it up by damn 20, the fuck out of here, son. Mm -hmm. You are clearly, clearly, you're not freaking robbing people. You taking it by force damn near. Mm. It's crazy how people are just taking advantage of the situation. Long gone are the days where businesses look out for their customers. Meaning I don't have to punch my customer in the, the gut to get what I need. Mm. They punch you in the gut and kick you in your damn nuts right now. They're taking above and beyond what they actually need to survive. That's, that's crazy to me. <sighs> it's just greed. I mean, all the way around for me, it's just greed. Now, 
when I think about gas prices, um, it's not like I said earlier, I, I can't complain about gas prices because when I first started driving, gas was 99 cents. Um, and I'm looking at a chart now in 91, the average gas price was a dollar 14. That was almost 30 years ago. Right. Yeah. And you know, 30 years before that in, 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 uh, in, 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 in 60, in sixties, gas was like 30 cent, 30, something, almost 40 cent. Yeah. So <clears throat> when people <laughs> are complaining about, about gas prices, I'm like, bruh, unless gas prices are going back down that far, I don't think there is really much to complain about. Um, I mean, in 1929, the average price of gas was 21 cents a gallon. Like, that's almost 100 years ago. Yeah. So when you look at historically where gas prices have, have gone, it's like, what are you going to do? Um, and then when you, when you factor in inflation, it's the same damn thing. Uh, it, you, and here's the thing that I look at again, I'm no mm-hmm. expert, but here's what I look at. <clears throat> everything costs so much because everything has a price. And, 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 and because someone is in a position to it's, it's supply and demand. If, if you can raise the price on the things people need, they're going to buy it. There's, there's no way around it. Just like a loaf of bread, you know, loaf of bread used to be like what 50, 60 cent. Now it's like a dollar, $2, depending on where you go. Um, you know, you got to factor all of that in, but everybody want to complain about gas prices. And it's like, like you were saying, take, um, public transportation. If it's available to you. Um, I know where I live, it's not available really, but if you live in the city, use it. So <clears throat> I, I just, you know, again, I, I, I can't complain because it is what it is. It ain't going to change. And, you know, I think overall people just need to learn how to maneuver in this world of today. We all know nothing is getting cheaper. Uh, prices may drop here and there, but we know overall nothing's getting cheaper. So you know, if you are a married couple and you have two incomes, it might be a little easier for you, for you to move around with stuff like that. But for, you know, single people like me or whatever the case may be, I think if you adjust your life accordingly, um, gas prices should not be a, a, a big issue for you. Again, you know, you have to regulate your life in order to maximize the benefits or or maximize the, your income. I just, and, and again, I have not been the savviest with my money most of the time, but at the end of the day, it's like, I know how to, to move around where I don't have to be like, God damn, what, what am I going to choose gas or food or, or, or rent or mortgage or, or this like, nah, just, Hey, pay my shit and move on. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Again, I, I agree with you that you got to be smart about the choices you make with your uh, resources, meaning your money. Some things you just don't have to have right now. Like I, I want to get another set of rims besides the factory rims for my car, but 
That's just a want. It's not a fucking need. Exactly. So what I'm going to fucking do is just buy me another set of tires and let it ride. Yep. I might take my, my factory rims off and, you know, put my little magic touch on them, customize them a little bit, but rims is not a necessity. No. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like, after you brought that up, I thought about people and their income taxes, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we're definitely in the income tax season here. People are just waiting for them checks to start coming through. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering how many people are actually going to be smart with the damn money. The same, the, the same amount of people that were smart last year, the year before, and years before that. <laughs> I mean, if they know, like I know, I mean, you really got to be paying attention to what's going on right now. Yeah. Like the inflation is is out of control, so again, taking your resources and you know, blowing a bag as they say. I don't get, but anyway, blowing a bag, it makes no sense right now. Your ass better be stocking up on your damn food or something. Buy some goddamn rice and beans, motherfucker. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Get that big ass ten pound bag of rice. <laughs> okay. In a in a bag, a bag of 